All right, good morning and welcome to Just Dafit, the Fiomi Shir. We're learning Yvamos Samichvo 66. We have a fantastic Shir for you today. We're going to be starting a new parak, uh, the seventh parak of Yvamos. I believe there are around 16 prakim in Yvamos. So, in Daf, we're more than half the way there in terms of prakim, not exactly, but again, we're staying away from Yibam a little bit. We're uh, going to talk about a new topic today. We just finished Puravu. We're going to talk about something else, about your favorite topic, eating truma. Uh, if you're a Kohen and you're wondering why not eating truma, there's a reason for it. You could ask your rabbi because you're Kame. Kame Mace, you can't eat, you can't eat truma in a state of Tuma. So really, if you're a Kohen, you could be pretty rich right now. You're getting truma. But you have to down more for the base on Migdash. You become taller. And then maybe... You could, um, you can get the truma, you can become tar, you got a mikvah, you can be maza, the paraduma, is there a paraduma in the world? I heard a couple years in Lakewood, they found the paraduma. Anyway, here we go, let's start it off big. Uh, and Aleph, the new parak. Um, Again, it's important to note that they're married over here, not just engaged. This is going to be the topic of Eon Ben Sion. We're going to discuss the difference between the right to eat truma from kiddushin, from engagement, and from marriage. There's a difference. And it'll play a big part in understanding our Gemara over here. Amana the Kohen Gadol, Grusha the Kohen Kohen Hedyot. And Amana is not allowed to marry a Kohen Gadol. They're not allowed to be married. And the same thing a Kohen and a regular Kohen can't marry the Grusha and Kalutza, but they don't listen to the Rabbanon. They're, they don't have rabbis. They're not listening to them. So they get married anyway. So now, Knesselah Avdei Milug, the Avdei Stone Barzal. We're talking about two concepts over here, which is very relevant to Ksuvos, Mesachas um, Ksuvos, which is the next Mesachta. Um, when you do get married, most people know there's a, a marriage contract uh, written. Uh, you give to your wife under the chuppah, common practice nowadays. Um, you read about the Masayim. She's a psula. She's a virgin. You give her 200 kesef, however much it's valued at nowadays, a couple thousand dollars. Um, if she's a baula, she was previously married, you give her all half of that. You promise to her if in case of divorce or in case that a husband dies first, she's able to collect that ksuva. But she gets other stuff also. Did you know that? Let's say she came into a marriage with a bank account. Or she came into a marriage with real estate. She she was a real estate mogul in her previous Baal Chuva lifetime. She owned uh, many properties um, throughout the world, big real estate portfolio. And now she comes into the marriage. And this guy, he's a poor guy, but he's a Kohen, but a Kohen Gadol, the Kohen, he doesn't have any too much money as a wife. He's struck it rich. He's marrying her for the money. Is it the other way around? A woman might marry a man for the money. Not not always, but they're not really after the money. Maybe they're after the good lifestyle. But um, the point is, is that um, she 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 brings certain possessions to the marriage. So these can be categorized in two different ways. It's next day Maluk and next day Son Barzo. Um, she has the option over here of designating which properties as to which. If she decides, she has to say, if she doesn't say anything, her property is at the dinner of Nixay Malug. Which Nixay Malug means that it basically stays in her, in her rishos, in her rishos throughout the marriage. The husband is a free allowed to use these properties and get benefit from these properties. And if it goes up in value, the real estate goes up in value, when they get divorced, she, or the husband dies, she gets the full property back, never really left her a shus, never left her property, so it went up and doubled in price. Uh, she gets it, and if it went down, she also loses money. But if she writes on Barzal, she writes in the Ksuba, it's more security. So in Barzal means iron sheep. She wants to uh, be sure that she's not losing her money to her husband when her husband is using her property. Um, she can write in the Ksuba, these are so in Barzal, it's called Nidunya, it's also another way of dowry. No way of saying a dowry. I guess a common dowry would be in this format um, where that the, the husband takes a chryas, he takes responsibility to pay her back whatever was worth at the time of the marriage. So let's say it's worth $100,000 at the time of the marriage. 
property goes up, they get divorced. The husband only owes her $100,000. But if it goes down to $50,000, he still owes her $100,000. So it's in the, the more in the rishus of the husband. If he's, he has responsibility for this property. He has to pay her back the value of it. So therefore, but it's his because if it goes up in value, he gets the profits. And if it goes down, he gets the losses. He still has to return the $100,000 to her. That's on bars. They have to write that explicitly in the Ksuba. So now we're talking about she's bringing him servants. As she's a land, she has servants. In the days they had servants. They're avodim. So she brings to him, brings into the marriage avni miluk, servants that are nixay miluk, but avni son barzal. And some that are son barzal, avni miluk, truma. In this marriage, which is not allowed, uh, the avni miluk are not allowed to eat truma. Avni son barzal, normally when a, a woman marries a Kohen, a man she gets to eat truma. She marries him illegally. She might not be allowed to eat truma. So if the Avdi Miluk, Avdi Miluk, she can't eat truma. If she's married illegally to him, she's not allowed to eat truma. What about her slave, her property, her slaves? Uh, Avdi Son Barzal, Yochlu. The Avdi Miluk can't eat truma. The Avdi Son Barzal, they could eat truma because they're really the belongs to the husband. The husband's a Kohen. Or a Kohen God of Elohim, Avdi Miluk. What is the din of Avdi Miluk? In Mesu, Mesu, Law. Like we explained before, if they die, they die in her account. Masiru, masiru, law. They're really in her rishos. If they become worth more, she gets the profit. Even though when they get married, technically he gets to he gets to uh, take benefit from them. the payros. It's called in Gemara. But he also has to nourish them. He has to feed them. They can't eat truma during this marriage. It's a legal marriage. What the definition of barzel? If they die, these uh, these servants, these slaves, so he has to repay them. Dar Masir was here below. If they became more valuable, he gets the profits. Hold of a Huchaya back for Yusan. Since he's responsible for them financially, they do get the Truma, even though it's a legal marriage. And she can't eat Truma. Her slaves can eat Truma. Bas Israel, she needs to Not not in a legal marriage this time. We have a regular Israeli. She marries a Kohen. Since they. Right, she's allowed to be married to the Kohen, so she gets each ruma. So our avodim, whether they're malug or some bars, they get each ruma. In the other case, Bas Kohen, she needs Israel. She was daughter of a Kohen, so technically, while she was growing up, she gets each ruma. But now she gets married to Israel. Once you get married to Israel, you lose that ability to each ruma. And he's allowed avodim, bein avodim malug, bein avodim bars. That once his marriage is consummated, so therefore, Ariel Eliyahu with ruma, she's married to Israel. So Israel, so therefore, not only does she lose the uh, ability to each ruma, but also her avodim. Whether the Maluk or some Barzal can eat Truma. The Gemara says, Avdi Maluk lo yaichlu, the Truma. Avdi Maluk, it says in the Mishnah, in the legal marriage, they can't eat Truma. Am I? What? Well, the Gemara challenges that. Why should that be the Hevek Yana Shakana Kenyan? It should be the din of an acquisition of a Kohen who acquired something. The San, you know, what's that din? The Bryce says, Minayan the Kohen Shanasa Isha. How do you know a Kohen? He marries a woman. The Kana of Adam. Or he acquired slaves. She yaichlu be Truma. They get the eat truma, regular din. Shnemar, the Kohen ki yikin nevish, kinyan kaspa hu al yechal bo. Kohen acquires something, acquires something that's money. They he get to eat it. That, the Gemara Darshan refers to marrying a woman. Normally you makadish them with keset. So marrying a woman. Or you buy a vodim. They become your possession. They get to eat. He feeds them, even though previously they couldn't eat. They were Israelin. Uh, they couldn't eat truma. They didn't have the right to eat truma. And now they can eat truma, even though they're not really Kohanim. How do you know he marries a woman and then the and the woman buys slaves? She had some money left over in some bank account. She bought slaves. Avadav shakano avadim, or his slaves actually buy other slaves. These slaves, the secondary slaves, Michael. Double lush on, right? It says it twice he bought something. He bought a person, he bought a, something with his money. So, the like Gemara Darshans that it refers to a Kenyan that bought a Kenyan, an Isha that bought an Evid or Avad, Avadim that bought Avadim, they all could eat. But since they're they're based on one another, meaning it's the Kenyan of a Kenyan, so if a Kenyan can eat, the, the Isha, we're talking about it was an illegal marriage to the Kohen Gadol or to the Kohen. She can't eat, so therefore she can't feed her Avdi Miluk. Right? The Soed Barzel right belong to the Kohen. They don't belong to the woman anymore. They belong to the Kohen. He took a for it. The next thing Miluk is what the Mish is talking about. 
The Gemara challenges below. Already, Aurel the Chatz Meim Shein Ochel Machil. If a Kohen is an Aurel, he's not circumcised, or he's Tame, right? <clears throat> At that point, he's Tame. He presently can't eat Truma, but he's married to a woman. He has a Vadim. He they could eat Truma. <clears throat> so the Gemara says there it's different. Hasan Pumayu Kali Blue. It's like his mouth was hurting, and your mouth hurts you for a second, and it gets better. So it's a temporary postponement of them eating Truma. So therefore. Anything which belongs to them could eat even when they technically can't eat right now. Whereas a very mamzer, shen ochel mamzer. This is a unique case, right? We, you know that um, a woman who's the Israeli who marries a Kohen, she could eat the truma. Now, let's say her husband dies. So if she has children from him, she can still eat. She could still eat truma. It still allows her to eat truma because there's still a connection to them because they had a child together. Let's say they had a child, let's say a daughter, and the daughter married a mamzer. Now, a mom's there, uh, <clears throat> a mom's there, someone's not going to marry uh, a Jewish person, a regular Israel, Israeli. So she, they have a, they have a daughter, marries the mom's there. Um, I'll say they have a daughter, I'm sorry, the daughter, they have a daughter, and the daughter does something illegal. She's with uh, a mom's there, would make the child a mom's there also, or she's with someone who's illegal, who's not allowed to be an Israel curry, so she makes a mom's there, and they have a grandchild, and then she dies. Uh, the, the daughter dies, but the grandchild, who's a mamzer, is still alive. So the mamzer is considered ayenla. The Gemara says, even if she has progeny, you know, grandchild, and even if the grandchild is a mamzer, right? It's, it's viewed as her original husband is still alive. She he can't eat. He can't eat truma. He's a mamzer. A mamzer can't eat truma, but he's able to feed the grandmother. You know, Michael, Amaravina, Kenyan Ocha, Kama, Kenyan Ocha, Michael, Shen Ocha, Eno Michael. So. The Gemara says no. All, 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 all the Gemara was trying to prove is that a Kenyan Ocha, meaning something that the Kohen acquired, a wife or a Vadim, uh, there we say Ocha Michael. So Kenyan Ocha, someone who, because he purchased them, had the ability to eat, so then they could eat. But a Mamzer is not a Kenyan Ocha. It happens to be a grandchild, but it's not a Kenyan Ocha. So that only when you're Kenyan Ocha, then we darshan. Whoever is able to ochel can be Michael. If you're not able to ochel, you can't be Michael. Rava Amar, so that would be the first source to explain the Mishnah. Rava gives a second reason. Technically, the Nifle Malug, they could eat in the Mishnah. Midaraisa and Torah. Rabban with the Gazibahu. Rabban said he can't eat. I can't eat. My servants can't eat. My Malug, the Nifle Malug can't eat. There are Malug, Nifle Malug. Zona he. So you can say to yourself, I must be a harlot. I must be a prostitute. I'm a terrible person. Eslo. He'll come to terrible to be again. If she, if she can't eat, but her avadim can eat, say, okay, I can't eat, but at least my avadim, it's not a terrible marriage. But if no one can eat, she's going to feel really bad about the marriage, and she doesn't really want her to get divorced. and want them to get out of the marriage. They're also to be married. Hilkach um, asi lafuka. Therefore, he's going to divorce her. She's going to ask for a divorce. Ravashi Omar, a third reason. Zero Shem, really... Rav Asher gives me the rice that she could eat. Zera, the reason they're abundant, the next time we can eat, Zera she matachel achar misa. We're worried that if next time we eats, then even after the wife dies, right, the avod and the next time we are going to still eat. Uh, sorry, after the husband dies, after the husband dies, she's still going to feed him, and that can't be. So the Gemara said, "Elam ata," because. The only reason they were able to eat is because the coin was alive. A regular, if we're making this gazera, we should make a gazera. A regular Israelis, uh, uh, regular Israelis who marries a coin, or she's allowed to be married to him, even during the marriage, she shouldn't eat gazera shema takel misa. Maybe she's going to end up eating after the coin dies. And if they have no children, she can't eat. El Amar Ravashi, Balmana, Kohenes, the Asti, Laruye, Mikara Akli Betruma the No, we're not talking about we're talking about specifically it's directed to our case in our Mishnah where she's Almana who married a Kohenes. Mana Kohenes Asya La Ruya Mikara Akli Betruma de Benasha. She's used to eat a Kohenes who marries a Kohen Gadol, right? So she was originally married allowed to eat from her father's house. Because she was a her father's allowed to eat his family, Truma. She's gonna say, "La ruy mi kara achli betruma de benasha." Originally, I ate from my father's house. In sibile la hai achli betruma de gavrai. When I got married to this guy, I ate the truma of my husband. Hashda hadri li lemilse. 
Kamaisa. Uh, and now I'm going back to my father's house. Right, she's not going to know that now when she's an Amman she marries a Kohen Gadol, so she became a Halala when she engaged in this Bia with the she was married to him, they had, they had sex together, so therefore she became a uh, Halala, she's a ruined, a ruined person, she lost her Kedusha, so therefore <clears throat> um, she's going to think, even though normally when you get married to a Kohen or a Kohen Gadol and you were a Kohenist and then you, your, your husband dies, you go back to your father's house and you don't have children, you could eat based in your father's house. She's going to say, I should go back to my father's house. But she doesn't know that she's a halala in this case. So therefore, hashta uh, shavis l'nafsha halala. So therefore, when you go there, that, um, like Ravashi says, she's going to eat uh, after after death, which she's not allowed to do. I mean, it sounds like in the Gemara she's eating even during the life of the Kohen. She eats the Isser. She ate while she's married to the Kohen, and she thinks legitimately she can think she could eat after she comes back, after her husband dies. But that's not the case. Right? That makes sense. By Almana, who marries a Kohen Gadol, where she comes from a family of Kahuna. Let's say she's a widow that comes from a family of Israel. She's not going to come back. We have no reason to worry. She's going to come back after her husband's death and eat after his death. Right, because she's the next time Malugi eating, so she's going to eat after the death. Uh, we don't assume that she's not going to go back. She's the Israeli. She knows she's not going to go back to her father's house. Her father never fed her truma. Where it says lo pligi rabbanon, they never they made they made a chilak, even though it only applies really by almana for comes from a family of a kohanim. For her father was a kohen, but they didn't make any differences based on the fact that there is a case of almana comes from a family of kohen, and therefore worried she's going to eat after misa. She's the avdei Malugi eating. After Misa, she's gonna, she's gonna, she's obviously eating during during the during the marriage. So then she's gonna might come to eat after the marriage. We're not worried about that. So that's why we don't allow the Nechsei Maluk Avadim to eat during the marriage. So according to the last two reasons that are abundant, according to the first reason is Daraisa. It seems that the, the psak based on Chaf here in, the, in Mishpat is is really it's Midaraisa. They don't. I'm gonna explain that more in and Zion. Explain that more the nature of the ability to eat of a woman who marries or is engaged to a Kohen. It's more can I says Shumla Baila. Now we come with a similar uh, a related topic. When a woman gets married, so Shumla Baila is basically Nikse Son Barzel. She evaluates the property. She says, I'm bringing you in this house. Uh, I own this house in the Caribbean. Um, it's worth, I don't know, a million dollars. And she says, I'm giving it to you as own barzel. Um, and it's own barzel. So therefore, you owe it to me when we get divorced or, or you die. He omers Cleon in hotel. It's not a house or it's a valuable watch or a valuable piano. I don't know. Cleon in hotel. She, at the end of the marriage, or get divorced. What does she want? She wants the piano back. Who omers Dami Mani knows. And he says, no, I get to keep the piano. I'll pay you the value of the piano. But it was worth $10,000. It was Steinway Grand Piano. Uh, it was worth ten thousand dollars. He says, "No, I'll pay you ten thousand dollars. I want to keep the piano. It's a vintage or an antique piano." Hadinimo. So the continuing me. Who who is Allah like? Does he get to keep it or not? Rabbi Yudah Amar. Rabbi Yudah says, "Top of Samachalam Rebbeis." Hadinima. She gets to take the piano. Rabbi Amar Hadinima. Rabbi Ami says, "No, he gets to." Pay it off and keep the piano. Rabbi Yehuda Amar Hadin Ima. He says she gets to take the piano. Mishum Shvach Beis Avia Dida. It's the prestige of her father's house. She bought it from her father's house. There's sentimental value over here. So therefore, she gets the object. Rabbi Heavy. Rabbi Ami Amar Hadin Ima. No, he got to keep it. Amar Mari Meisu Meisu Lo. He made serious serious low. If she bought in possessions or avodim or anything to him, so it's his responsibility. If they went up. Right, <clears throat> he gets the profits. They went down. He suffers the losses. Hold the chayav b'achrius, and he's responsible them. Yochlu. So therefore, he sort of was kone them, and and therefore he's able to eat them truma. So therefore, it's a responsibility. So therefore, he gets he basically was kone them, and he gets to just return the value. Amar of Safra, Amika Sani Vehain Shalom. Of Safra challenges that say that they belong to him. Hold the chayav b'achrius, and he's responsible for them. But it's really not really his that he gets to keep it after the marriage dissolves. 
So the Gemara says, in any case uh, that you're chayiv and achriyus and you're responsible, um, right? This is really challenging the mission. Anytime you're 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 responsible for the value of something for these avodim, you get to eat the truma. The mission says that the son bars like eat the truma, but none. Yisrael shasachar para mi kohen. Yisrael rents a cow from a kohen. Or nowadays he would rent a car from a kohen. Or Isaiah yachilenu karshine truma. You get to eat, you get to feed, uh, uh, you get to feed a truma, right? It belongs to a kohen. The kohen's property is animals can eat truma. Sachar, kohen shasachar para mi Yisrael. The kohen rents a cow from Yisrael. Af bishu nuzasa alav. Even though the kohen is responsible to feed it, to put gas in the car. Lo yachilenu karshine truma. He can't feed the cow truma because it belongs to Yisrael. So you see, even though he's, he has achrai to feed it, he's responsible. He has not kohen it. Whereas with tisbra and he nami the mechayev begneva aveveda, when you rent an animal, even though you're chayev to reimburse the person if it gets stolen or lost, but on seav bechirsha menafka damer mi mechayev. If there's an onus, right, a strange act happens, lightning strikes, or let's say a chisha or it gets. Um, weaker, loses weight of an afkas, or it blows up, um, increase in value, or maybe decrease in value, maybe he's not responsible for this. Uh, the case in our mission is El Seifa, is similar to the Seifa of this price. Yisrael Shasham Para Mi Kohen. Yisrael, that Sham Para. Um, this would be an agreement where basically um, he's not just leasing it from uh, the Kohen, he's actually. Uh, taking a full responsibility for it, even for own sin, even if something um, unnatural happened, even a natural disaster happened, he's responsible. So he took it from a Kohen, and he agreed, whatever happens to it, I'm going to pay you the value of the cow as it was now. He can defeat a truma. of a Kohen, a Kohen who takes a complete achrayas from the cow of Yisrael, Yachlanik Rashin and Shuma, so it belongs to him. He can feed a it, Shuma, it's his. So therefore, you see that taking achrayas, it makes sense in our Mishnah that Nilsen Son Barzal, we can take complete achrayas, and it's responsible even for own sin. If lightning strikes the Avodim, it's his fault. He has to pay the original value of the of the slave back to the woman, so that's comparable to our Mishnah. Rabba, Yosef, Bishil, Yasif, Rabba, Yosef, Bishil, Pirkid, Ramnachman, Rabba, Yosef sat in the back. Of the lecture of Nachman, Yosef Akamri, Tanya Kavasi, and they started talking to themselves. Tanya Kavasi, the Rabbi Yehuda, Tanya Kavasi, the Rabbi. Apparently, they didn't like the share so much. They were more interested in discussing Ivamu stuff, Samo Kavavam and Bez. And they said, Tanya Kavasi, the Rabbi Yehuda, Tanya Kavasi, the Rabbi Ami. We have prices like each opinion. Tanya Kavasi, the Rabbi Ami, Ali, Son, Barzal, Yotim, Mishen, Vayim, Isha, Valol, Isha. If a person brings into a marriage, a woman brings into a marriage, Son, Barzal. So, if the husband uh, normally, an evid gets freed if the if the owner of the hus of the evid of the slave knocks out an eye or a tooth or some other major uh, limb of a, of an evid, so he gets to go free as a penalty to the to the adon to the to the master. It depends who's the master. So if the man knocked out um, one of his teeth or, or eyes, he would go out. Well, Isha. But the Isha knocked it out. She's not the, really the rightful owner, even though it was originally her Evid, but now it's in the Achrayas, the responsibility of the husband, so she's not able to free it, only he's able to free it when he hits, when he knocks out the tooth of the Evid. Tanya Gwasi, the Rabbi Yudah, so you see what? You see that Kravami, the Rami said, Hadini Mo, that he really acquires full acquirership, full uh, full ownership. Tanya Gwasi, the Rabbi Yudah, but your advice like Rehuda, Machlesa Shum Labal, Imratza Baal Limkor, Lo Yimkor. If she brings something, a dowry, right, or nechis on barzal to her husband, if the husband wants to sell it, he can't sell it. Additionally, if in the middle of the marriage, let's say he gave her a gift, right, it wasn't her original property, he gave her a gift, and the way they structured the gift was that it became like son barzal, right? He, he took it, basically, whatever the gift is value now, I bought, her, I bought her stock, Apple stock, right now, so I'm going to pay you whatever the stock is worth right now. So therefore, Imrata <clears throat> Baal Limkor, if he wants to sell a stock, Lo Yimkor, he can't sell it. It's not his. Mokru Shneim, Leparnasa, Zeya, Maitza, Devshim, Leo, the Amra Baal, Motsim, Alakukos. If he illegally tried to sell it, he wanted to sell it, one of the excuses of selling it, he needed to feed his wife. He sold the Apple stock to feed his wife. Shemuel says, the Baal Motsim, Alakukos, it wasn't an effective sale. 
and the husband could take it out of the hands of the kugels, take a stock back. It wasn't an effective sale. I can't sell it. It belongs to the woman. So you see, like Rav Yehuda, it belongs to the woman. I'm a Rav, I'm a Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Rav Yehuda, so we're undecided. Rav Nachman, Pasul, Rav Nachman, like Rav Yehuda, she gets to take it back. I'm like Rav, Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman, Tanya Gavazi, Rav Ami. We have a bride, so we sell like Rav Ami. Shane Va'ayin, Afa Gavazi, Tanya Gavazi, Rav Ami. Miss Sabra, time with Rav Yehuda, he responded, even though we have a bride, so like Rav Ami, it makes more sense, Rav Yehuda's position, Mishum Shvach, Beis Avia, sentimental value. Right, the procedure of father's house. He is uh, the Isla of Gavra, it's the, the Milsa, certain woman. She gave sewn bars all to her husband. What did she give him? A nice coat. A nice fine woolen coat made from Nautica, a pea coat, Vixuvasa. She gave that to him. She wanted to give him a dowry. She wanted to be nice to her husband. Shakiv, he died. So now technically she's able to get it back or to get the value of the coat back, depending on who he holds. Like Shakulo Yachme Parsua Misna. Before they chance to do anything, the the the, the children of the inheritors of the husband, they took this coat, the pea coat, and they buried it. They buried the dead person in the pea coat. Amarava Kanye Misna. Rava says the dead person acquired it, meaning it becomes hectic. Uh, we'll learn in other places that anything that the clothes of a dead person, a dead person himself, has been of hectic, is comparable to hectic. The Kodesh. Amarle Nani, buried the Rav Yosef, buried the Rav, the Rav Kahana. Amarava, Amaravna. Amalaka Rav Yehuda, Laka Fals Rav Yehuda. Here again, it was Nikhil's own barzal. So therefore, it belongs, even though principally um, the husband has the right head, owns it during the marriage, but he doesn't own the actual goof, the chafetz. He, uh, he just owns the value. So here also, he, don't, he doesn't own the cloak. So how could they do it? How could they, they don't have the right to assert it, to put it on the dead person. I'm like, Milo Moder, Rabbi Huda, the Mechusar Govaina. Even Rabbi Huda admits that she has the right to collect it, but until she collects it, it's not hers. Okay, when the Mechusar Govaina, all that she does is really have a lien. She has an ability to collect it, a lien on that property. If you have a putaki, which is a type of lien, right? If someone borrows money from you and they say, if I don't pay you back, I'm going to give you my cow, maybe my house, right? So if you're maktish, that house, or if it's an evid, a slave is a lien on a slave. You free the slave before he collects the payment, before he, he gets to collect the money from you. Uh, or it becomes chame. It's Pesach comes with a loaf of bread. I don't know. It was actually expensive whiskey. And it became chame. It ruins the sheep, but he, it ruins his lien. He can't collect. So here also, a dead person in his clothing has a den of hectish. So therefore, even since she didn't collect yet, so therefore... It removes the lien, and it belongs to the dead person. She can't collect it. Amrav Yehuda Yachnis Alo Shnei Kelim Be'alav Zuz. What about if she gave him two pianos, right? Be'alav Zuz. Each was worth five hundred dollars. V'shav Shavu Five Thousand Dollars. V'shav Kuv Amdu Al Shnei Al Payim. And they became worth a lot during the marriage. Double in value. No Tlasa B'Ksuvasa. Echen Al Tlasa B'Ksuvasa. Echen Al Tenes Damim. She gets to take both pianos back. One she takes with her ksuba, which was worth a thousand. She gets one for a thousand, and one she has to pay another thousand for. She only had sewn bars, she was only guaranteed a thousand. These were two pianos, they have sentimental value from her family, her father's house, so therefore she gets to take both of them back. We just learned that Allah has like Huda. Sentimental value is very important. You already said it one time. Mao the same as the says no. Well, you would have thought from the original psak Allah like a Yehuda Ani Milei Hecha Demati LeMishka B'Ksuva. So that's where she's collecting exactly what it says in the Ksuva, the value of what it was in the Ksuva. Meit and Dami Mishka Lo. But to add value, she only didn't guarantee a thousand dollars. Now the two pianos are instead of worth five hundred dollars, they're worth a thousand dollars. Instead of each worthing five hundred dollars, each are worth a thousand dollars. Combine two thousand dollars. So maybe she can't take it. To get, add money to take it back, no, still the shvach base of the sentimental value of the prestige of her father's house. She's allowed to take both pianos back and pay for the second one out of her own pocket to take that one back. Hope you enjoyed today's share. See you on the event. See you on coming up right now.